All right, we're going to get started. Thank you all for joining us today to learn more about applying to become an affiliate of B City USA. I'm going to begin by giving a quick overview of the B City program, um, the commitments affiliates make, and steps involved in applying. And then I'll hand it over to the committee chairs who have been kind enough to join us today to share their experience navigating the application process. And then we'll end with some time for presenters to answer any questions you have. Um, and I'm Molly Martin. I'm the B-City USA coordinator here at the Xerces Society. B-City USA and its sister initiative, B Campus USA, are initiatives of the Xerces Society. And many of you are likely familiar with Xerces, but for those who aren't, Xerces is a nonprofit focused on conserving invertebrates and their habitat. And we use hands-on conservation, advocacy, um, education, and applied research to protect the life that sustains us. The mission of Bee City USA is to galvanize communities to sustain pollinators by increasing the abundance of native plants, providing nest sites, um, and reducing the use of pesticides. While we call the main initiative Bee City USA, there are actually two sister initiatives that are nested within it, and those are Bee City USA and Bee Campus USA. Any incorporated city, town, um, or village is welcome to apply to become an affiliate of Bee City USA. And we also work with counties if most of the work is happening in the county rather than in any incorporated municipality within the county. Um, and we also work with some other communities that function like incorporated, incorporated municipalities. So an example of that would be a military base um, or some sort of community that has a governing body that functions like a city council and can pass a resolution. And college and university campuses can apply to become affiliates of B Campus USA. And at this point, we don't work with other types of schools like elementary, middle, or high schools or with businesses. Since its founding in 2012, Bee City and Bee Campus have grown substantially. There currently are over 100 Bee City affiliates and over 100 Bee Campus affiliates, so over 200 affiliates total in 42 states. And on this map, the green dots are city affiliates and the blue dots are campuses. And if you visit our website, you can see an interactive version of this map where you can click around um, and learn more about which affiliates are where when they joined um, and that type of thing. Affiliates of Bee City make a variety of commitments. Affiliates create and enhance pollinator habitat on public and private land. This commitment involves creating an integrated pest management plan, a native plant list, um, and a native plant supplier list. They make city or county policies and plans pollinator conscious. They host pollinator awareness events. Publicly acknowledge their Bee City USA affiliation with signs and an online presence annually apply for renewal and report on the last year's activities, and then finally pay an initial application and annual renewal fees. In order to apply, cities first form a committee, and the committee can either be an existing committee or subcommittee, um, or a new one, and it can be hosted within the local government or within a nonprofit organization. Applicants also designate a sponsoring department within the city government and a liaison from that department to act as the connection, um, kind of the go between, between the city government and the B City Committee. Applicants then complete an online application, which you can find on the B City website. They receive approval of the highest elected official, have the city council adopt the resolution, and pay an application fee. And the resolution is based on a template that we have um, available on the application page of the B City website. 
Applicants do not need to have already achieved all the commitments before applying. The application is essentially a pledge to complete the commitments in the first year or two before the first renewal is due. And the first renewal is due at the end of February after an affiliate has been certified for a full calendar year. So if you become certified before the end of the year in 2020, your first renewal would be due February 2022. And if you'd like a more thorough overview of the BCD program, I encourage you to watch our recent introduction webinar, um, which is available on Xerces YouTube channel. And you can also find more information on our website. So with that, we have chairs from four city affiliates here today, and I'm excited to hand it over to Melissa Walker um, to share her experience with Arlington, Texas, becoming an affiliate of BCD USA. Okay. How are we doing today? Um, my name is Melissa Walker. I am the city of Arlington's um, environmental education specialist. Let me see if I can get this screen. There we go. Um, so I am the environmental education specialist for the city of Arlington. If you don't know where Arlington is, it is in between Dallas and Fort Worth. That's the easiest way to explain it. Um, one of the reasons why um, I was chosen as the liaison for this committee and um, our department was chosen is I'm in the stormwater group, which is in public works. And one of our goals is lowering pesticide and fertilizer use for stormwater um, pollution prevention. And so that's kind of what my intro is into this program. Um, we are a big department. Um, so um, I do a lot of education for both public works, stormwater, and floodplain. And this is kind of fitting in nicely. Um, I'm kind of enjoying this. This is my fun project. So how this all got started is a couple of years ago, we have a committee called the Citizens Environmental Committee. And how our committees in Arlington typically work is their advisory committees to the city council. And council, you know, they get ideas from residents and, you know, come up with their own ideas. And then they look for a committee to do research and make recommendations back to the council um, on projects and special projects for us to do. So um, the CEC committee was tasked with studying um, honeybees as, and making recommendations on honeybee education. Um, so they went through about a year, year and a half of creating a honeybee initiative report. And out of that report, there were recommendations, there were eight of them. One of them was the city of Arlington becoming a bee city affiliate. Um, so that's where this kind of came from. One of the um, things is that if you're a city, you probably already know this, most of your committees are advisory only. They don't do a lot of work. They create the recommendations and then hand it off and other people, there are, you know, different departments or people in departments typically then fulfill those recommendations. So that's kind of what happened here, but we didn't have a committee for it to go to. So we had to create a new B city committee. Now, the first thing was we created a staff committee just to get the, um, do the resolution get the application process started, which by the way, doing the application, that's really kind of the easy part. It's filling out the paperwork. Everybody's in agreement, we're gonna do it. Um, and then, then subsequently doing a council resolution to get city council on board. So um, the next step was forming the committee. So once we got um, the actual resolution passed, which I put on the screen, um, which actually passed a year ago, this month, um, we started working on how are we going to form this committee? What, what is kind of our roadmap to getting um, the requirements fulfilled, but creating it kind of as our own? Um, this was kind of new for everyone, so I was kind of looking at what everybody else was doing. But 
we went through, we started doing some advertising, web articles. I also did a lot of consultation with our city attorney about how this committee is going to be able to operate as compared to our other committees. Um, it's a different um, legal structure. So that's very important to make sure if you're working for a government entity, make sure you're talking to your city attorneys. Um, so then we started working on making up um, how we wanted the committee to be made up and the scope of work and then creating the committee and doing the outreach to get the committee created. Um, and then, you know, by the time we did a lot of that, um, the holidays came through and then it's spring and this year we had COVID. And that kind of shut everything down at the city. So we are behind schedule as usual. Um, but just a lesson that our best laid plans are going to get um, you know, way laid by something. So within the last couple of months, we've had a couple of meetings. We've got our committee together. I basically just opened it up to our residents through website articles and our, our current stormwater webpage. Um, and had residents apply um, that were interested. I got about, you know, about 50 or 60 applicants. They um, kind of came from a lot of different groups. There were residents, there were retirees, college students, college professors, teachers. We have our Texas Master Naturalist group. So um, I picked a lot from, I wanted a cross-section of the community. I didn't want a whole bunch of College students who might be into entomology and knows a whole lot. I wanted to also have residents who maybe didn't know a whole lot, but were wanting passionate about learning. So I wanted to make sure we had a good cross section of our um, community. We also looked at we have five city council um, districts within the city, and so I wanted to try and get two people per district that lived in those districts. I was almost able to achieve that. I had one district that I only had one person who volunteered from, but that was okay. Um, and so we've met a couple of times and now we're gearing up and focusing on um, the website, creating a B-City website, which I do have already, but we want to know what we're trying to decide what we're going to put on it right now. So we're in process of doing that. And then we're going to do a, a an event that we're thinking about doing a pollinator scavenger hunt at the end of this month. Um, so we're starting um, to get moved forward with this committee. Um, this year's been weird, so um, we're behind a little bit, but we have gotten a lot of things done. So um, when they asked me to do this, they asked me to give you some advice, especially about the um, application part of it. Like I said, once you decide to do it, the application part is filling out the paperwork, you know, um, paying the application fee. Um, the next part is really the best advice they can give you is taking the time to plan and organize. How are you going to do this? What do you do? What do you want to do? What's your end goals? Um, so First thing is making sure you're, if you are a city entity, a municipal entity, make sure you're getting legal advice of how you're creating the committee as compared to what your other committees are like within your city. And that person is going to be a, a person you can go to for if you decide you want to do fundraising or if you decide you um, want to do grant funding or projects, that person is going to be able to give you um, really good guidance. So that's one thing I'd advise you to do. Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I love that saying. Um, there are a lot of short-term goals that you can complete very quickly. There's also a lot of things that may be more long-term, especially when you're dealing with um, changing ordinances or regulations um, within the city. That can take a lot of time, and you need to make sure you're coordinating with those departments of um, and having a person over there that you can talk to. So take time, plan and organize. Look at your municipal staff um, for other people that are doing um, education. Um, like I said, they picked me because I do stormwater education. We're looking at already doing 
pollution prevention and putting integrated pest management um, in, in education programs for residents, but also within the city itself. Um, but water conservation, um, if you have an educator doing that, they're typically doing native plant and adaptive plant education already for water conservation. So they can be a really good resource. Your parks and rec department will have somebody that is doing outreach, um, maybe just on the trees. Um, but ours right now did the monarch butterfly, uh, mayor's monarch butterfly challenge. So they're doing a part of pollinators so you can, you can help work with them and partner with them on different things. Be a resource for them and they can be a resource for you. Um, the other thing, tap into community groups. We have master gardeners, master naturalists, we have garden clubs. Um, they're gonna give you that basis of experience and passion, but I, I, the more residents I talk to, they're extremely passionate. They may not know a whole lot, but they wanna learn. And so really looking at your community and having a cross section of your community is, is really gonna um, grow that, I feel, is gonna help us grow this into many different parts of our, our city. And the last thing, just remember to have fun. Um, I think that's one of the things we forget sometimes when we're doing this for work is there are some fun things. There, this is going to be a fun project. And um, I, the thing I most enjoy about my job is interacting with our residents. And so I'm hoping that this is um, going to be another tool for me to be more interactive with my residents. And with that, um, a few accomplishments. We're, we have published the website. Uh, we did a proclamation for National Pollinator Week. We've done social media posts, um, mainly for National Honeybee Day, Moth Week. Um, we're working on our location for our Bee City sign, and then hopefully having the pollinator event at the end of the month, um, doing kind of a scavenger hunt. And with that, I really don't have anything else. Um, that's it. Great. Thank you, Melissa. If anyone has questions for Melissa, you can put them in the Q&A and we'll get to those at the end. Um, next up, I'm excited to introduce Heidi James from Lynchburg, Virginia. We'll hand it over to you, Heidi. Hi. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Let's see, I just wanted to tell you that I am um, a member of a garden club in Lynchburg, Virginia, and also a member of the Garden Club of Virginia. And last year in 2019, two of our local garden clubs joined forces to try to work on some environmental projects. And one of the popular ones was how to help pollinators. So during a brainstorming session, we realized that Lynchburg is already a tree city, USA. And we wondered, wow, I wonder if there's such a, a thing as a bee city USA. So we Googled it and we just couldn't believe that there actually is. And we were so excited. Um, so once we looked up the mission of bee city USA, we mm -hmm. decided to contact our parks and recreation department to see if they would be willing to help us with this. They have been so supportive of uh, many projects with our garden clubs over the years in the past. And so we went over and had a meeting with them and they loved the idea. And they basically took the project and ran with it. They did the legwork to um, fill out the application online. And so on my screen here, I wanted to point out that Lynchburg, Virginia is a bee city, but also in town here, we have Randolph College. And they were the first bee campus in the state of Virginia. And Lynchburg was the uh, second bee city in Virginia. Lynchburg and Randolph College signs that we have now that we put up in our town. The sign on the left, Lynchburg has made three of these and our public works department actually made the signs and they put them at several of our gateways into our city on some of our highways. And uh, like I said, Lynchburg was the second B city in Virginia and Randolph College was the first B campus in Virginia. So after we met with Parks and Rec, uh, they um, took the ball and ran with it. They filled out the application online, which, as Melissa said, that was the easy part. And then they they worked with city council 
to get the template ready, which was provided on the Xerxes website. So that was pretty easy. And city council voted unanimously to have Lynchburg become a B city. It was really exciting. Um, and by, by adopting the resolution, they, Lynchburg has pledged to reduce the use of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, to plant native plants, to support pollinators, to provide outreach, and then they pay a small fee based on the population of your city. So Lynchburg, Virginia, we have about 80,000 people and our fee is $400 annually. Um, the commitments of a bee city, those were covered by Molly, but I'll just run through this. The first thing we had to do was form a working committee and we just call ours the Lynchburg Bee City Working Committee, which brings together interested participants. Um, we put up our bee city signs, we have three. Um, we hosted, we've hosted some educational events. We provided a native plant list and a place, a supplier for the, na the native plants to our citizens. And so that has taken the form of a brochure and we are also working on a web page, and it'll be available there too. Um, the native plant list was really interesting to do because a lot of the plants we thought were native around here are not, but we also found some that are exciting that we didn't know we could include. So that was a good project and it includes trees and shrubs. Um, where the city needs to integrate native plants into city planting plans, and then they file an annual report, like Molly said. The benefits of becoming a bee city, Molly also connected on that. Um, it brings community efforts together and into focus, which has been really nice because a lot of our garden clubs really, you know, we, we try to do projects and have fundraisers and raise money, but it's so much easier when we're working with a coalition of like-minded organizations. We don't have to work quite as hard. We, we feel like it's a better project and we have a lot of help around town and it's really great. Um, it institutionalizes a pollinator habitat plan into our planting plans. It connects our city to a national effort. Uh, we get support from the Xerxes Society like this webinar today. Um, we have access to resources. I recently had to send Molly a picture of a bee and find out what kind of bee it was. And that was really nice. And then there's accountability for our city. They want to maintain this bee city um, status. So they're actually working on it every, every year. We've got projects we have in mind and it's been fun. Uh, the members of our working committee are a lot of um, city departments, including water resources, buildings and grounds, parks and rec, our inspections division. You know, the inspections division is the group that gets complaints about people who aren't mowing. And so we've have been working with them to educate our public uh, people around town that it's not always good to mow everything down. We're trying to leave roadsides unmown so that we can have wildflowers come back. The Lynchburg Garden Club, Hillside Garden Club. We have master gardeners, master naturalists, the beekeepers. We also have the Lynchburg Area Food Council, with that, which I thought was really good. They work on um, addressing hunger issues in our town, and they're trying to educate people about eating healthy foods and um, pointing out the role that pollinators play. So they've been really excited to be a part of this. We have Randolph College. We have our local newspaper, Nature Writer, who stays in touch with what we're up to, and Lynchburg Grows, which is an organization that grows um, organic vegetables and sells them at our market. Um, some of the projects we've taken on since becoming a bee city, we put in three acres of pollinator beds on our local highways. Our um, garden clubs put forward the money for the seeds and the city has provided the labor and the equipment to plant the beds. And so we've had those going for two years now and uh, they're pretty visible. Um, we partnered with a local nursery to get native trees to plant at a local high school to support their beekeeping club. And here you can see our city crews out planting with the beekeeper students there. That was really nice. Um, we, have, we have a very visible field across the street from an elementary school in town. And we have been working with the city to keep that just natural and unmown. And this is one of the areas that people may complain about if it looks like it hasn't been mowed, but um, we're educating people. We put this sign up about the fact that it's habitat restoration area and we've 
gotten some really good feedback and the local elementary school has been helping. They went out on um, during COVID as families in little groups and planted some seeds and it was really a positive experience in our town. Uh, we brought the movie Wings of Life to Lynchburg at our local theater and we um, had a field trip with our city schools and we brought in 600 sixth graders to see the movie and then we had a second viewing which was open to the public and it was just a great event. We had uh, in the lobby we had all of our different B-City working committee groups with tables to educate people about what we do. And um, it, it was really well attended and the kids loved it. Uh, now we are working on a, a pollinator habitat uh, certification program. So what we do is we allow people to um, sign up to certify their garden and they have to be sure that they've put in the correct plants, that they've provided water, that they're gonna leave their um, gardens intact over the winter, and then if they fill in all the steps, they can put up a little sign like this in their garden. So this is a little fundraiser for us, and we've actually been doing pretty well with it, and it's it's really working to educate people. Um, luckily, the department, the Secretary of Transportation for the state of Virginia is from Lynchburg, and she's really been working hard to help us um, work with uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation to highlight their pollinator programs in our area. Um, the state of Virginia sells two license plates that, and the proceeds for these license plates is put uh, towards pollinator plantings on our state highways. And then uh, two of our garden clubs are putting in a huge pollinator bed, which will feature native perennials. We're working with the city again, um, and we're gonna put signage in. And this, this bed will be on a visible highway and we're gonna leave it intact over the winter and educate the public on why we're not clearing out the plant debris and why we're trying to keep it natural. So we're hoping this will be a good educational experience. And um, at Randolph College, they have installed a pollinator garden and here's one of their educational signs. And then here is a picture of their garden on their campus, it's really pretty. Um, our city has also added pollinator beds in our parks, and they also have educational signage. And um, like I mentioned, they're also working on a web page, but COVID has slowed that down a little bit, but we're really uh, excited to get going on some more projects. I keep asking our city staff, have there been any downsides to becoming a bee city? And they keep saying, no, absolutely not. They love it. Uh, they've had we've had so many fun ideas at our B City Working Committee that we really have to try to slow ourselves down because we want to keep this going for a long time and it's so tempting, like Melissa said, to do all the projects at once because they're all really exciting. And um, I guess the last thing I want to point out is that our B City Working Committee is open to the public. Anyone can attend the meetings and participate. And um, we want it to be an, a welcoming, open, exciting project for our community. And so far it's been excellent. I would say that Lynchburg, Virginia highly recommends the Bee City USA program. Great, thank you so much, Heidi. That's fun to see all the projects that you're doing. Next up, we have Tanya Dotlick and Joanne Andrews from Durham, North Carolina. Okay, do it. Yes, that's working. Thanks. Okay, great. Joanne? Yes. Okay, so thanks. Thanks for having us. Um, Tanya and I are going to tag team this a little bit because we're co chairs um, of Durham B City USA. And um, I was really inspired by hearing Heidi and have been scribbling down ideas from Lynchburg because that's, that's uh, got a lot going on there. So our program maybe started a little bit differently. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, I am a former middle school art teacher with Durham Public Schools. Oh, sorry, moving too fast. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Um, and I had done a public art project with my middle school students around colony collapse disorder, and this was back in 2014, I guess. And it was a school wide project that we did called Bees Please, and it was um, a way to educate our school population about bees and some of the environmental stressors that they were 
facing. And so every student in the school, um, you can go to the next slide, created a honeybee using recycled materials. I already had a very strong reuse ethic in my art room. Um, so we brought in another artist, a friend of mine who was also an environmental artist, and we settled on packing peanuts and um, plastic water bottles for the wings. And those are just little sticks for the for the legs. And so the, every student in the school, because I saw every student in my classroom made a bee and we ended up with over a thousand little honeybees that we strung up and we hung them in a swarm in the lobby of the school and had a honey tasting, beekeepers came to visit. And out of that, we also started a school garden. So that was something that I had done in my classroom, um, just out of a kind of a personal interest in bees, but also that environmental um, ethic that I had in my classroom. Uh, next slide. And then came the Beaver Queen pageant. And I say here, you should probably Google this one because that's sort of its own um, topic. But we have a, an annual fundraiser here in Durham called the Beaver Queen pageant. And it, it is a very fun, wacky time that supports um, the Ellerby Creek Watershed Association, which is our local uh, city watershed. And um, contestants compete to be Beaver Queen. And it's a long story. That's why I, I suggest looking it up on your free time. Um, and I decided that as a way to broaden my educational efforts around bees and habitat and healthy habitat, that I would compete to be Beaver Queen. And I came up with a persona, um, Ms. Polly Nader. And I brought all my friends on board and we um, created a, a very fun giant puppet show. And um, I was the first interspecies queen. Most of the other queens had been beavers. Um, so Miss Pollinator, Beaver Queen 2015. And you can see there she is prancing in the, in the field. Um, next slide. So during my year of reign, Miss Pollinator's reign as Beaver Queen, we had gone to Asheville and stopped in at the um, Bee Charmer, which is a fantastic uh, honey store, bee-focused store in Asheville, North Carolina. And I had picked up a brochure about the Bee City certification. Um, this was prior to it uh, becoming a part of the Xerces um, organization. And as soon as I saw it, I realized that this was what Miss Polly needed to do. Uh, during her reign as queen. So I came back and gathered together um, some other bee lovers because we have a lot of bee loving people in Durham and talked to Tanya, who is our uh, nonprofit liaison with Keep Durham Beautiful. And we decided to go ahead with the process of certifying Durham. And here you can see our um, original group when we were uh, approved by city council. And then we became a bee city. So for us, I guess the process was a little bit different. And I think it came out of sort of a very um, spirit of creativity and community um, after <laughs> there were other opportunities for Miss Polly to make, make some public appearances um, here and there. And this was at um, a kinetic sculpture race, Miss Polly and the Pirates of Oz. So, you know, anytime that there was an opportunity to educate more in this very creative way, um, I tried to take advantage of that. But also in that process, we created a real coalition of groups who like be downtown. Hang on one second, Tanya, maybe go back to that other one. That's okay. Um, the be downtown was my neighbor and she was a North Carolina state grad who um, had a startup company. Um, she was a fourth, genera fourth generation beekeeper and started a company that installed um, beehives in, um, for corporations. And she has now grown into a multi-million dollar business, but she was one of our, our initial, and they are still part of our coalition. So there's just so much in Durham that we didn't have to invent a lot. We just had to network people because people were already doing a lot of the, the work um, for bees and for, for bee habitat here. So um, after we got our certification, really Tanya and her group over at Keep Durham Beautiful uh, kind of ran with it. And it's it's been a fantastic five years, four years since we were certified. We were the 20th city to be certified and we've had so many wacky events, so many really fun creative events. Um, 
Matthew Wiley, who's doing this uh, series of murals um, all across the country, came and did this mural on the side of the Burt's Bees headquarters, which is here in Durham. Um, and that was a really just cool event that was kind of typical of the creative spirit, I think, that defines Durham Bee City. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Tanya because she can can tell you a lot more. Thanks, Joanne. So Joanne, as you can tell, has been the, the creative inspiration to our committee. And um, we definitely have her to thank for um, bringing it to the attention of the local government. And so one of the first steps in a requirement is to find a local government liaison. And, um, you know, some of these have been initiated by the local government, as in um, Melissa's story, and some have been initiated by residents, and some, as in our story, is initiated really by an individual or a group of connected partners. And so once you, depending on how you approach it, the step of finding a government liaison is, um, is important because I think it, um, it helps to make it a more effective, more effective in what it truly is intending to do, which is to change practices that enhance the habitat and, you know, um, envi the environment for our pollinators and our bees. And so, and biodiversity in general, which I think we're moving more towards focusing on biodiversity in Durham, much thanks to Burt's Bees being here in Durham and part of our committee. Um, so I have on the side a bunch of suggestions for a potential partner and um, stormwater is definitely a good option. I'm looking for a public official who is in an outreach or education role, I think is, um, is a key. Um, in our case, um, I am the executive director of our Keep America Beautiful affiliate called Keep Durham Beautiful. And if you don't know your community's Keep America Beautiful affiliate, you can go to the national website and look it up and see if you even have one. But many times those organizations are embedded in the local government. And so they can be a really good liaison either on your committee or perhaps your actual liaison because they already tread a line between the um, you know, residents and the nonprofit world and um, forming public-private partnerships, and then also the partnership with the government entity. But uh, I won't read through these, but it just gives you some ideas um, and look outside of perhaps the city to potentially the county too, depending on your particular community's um, structure. And one of the things that was a little bit of a learning curve for us was to understand the difference between a resolution and a proclamation. Uh, a resolution is um, actually requires a vote of city council, at least in our case. And so it was a bit more complex of a process because we actually had to present um, justification and it had to go in well in advance so that the city council members could study what was being proposed because they were actually going to vote on it and need to enforce it. Whereas a proclamation, which many entities and nonprofits are probably accustomed to doing, is more of a um, a ceremonial item that doesn't require a vote of the council and is non-binding. It's really just a, a publicity exercise. So the resolution, sometimes um, your public officials will be a little bit more um, careful in trying to understand what the meaning is behind the resolution that they're passing. And for that reason, it can be important to figure out who is going to make that request. In our case, um, the process got slowed down quite a lot. Um, as Melissa was saying, the filling out the form is the small part of the problem. You know, getting it through the potential bureaucracy is a little bit more of a challenge, but it's an important exercise because it's kind of like forming a strategic plan or something. You have to get everybody on board and believing in what you're saying and collaborating to create it and buying into it. And then once they've done that, then you have a committed municipality that is, um, you know, behind putting, implementing the practices that they've committed to doing. And that's really what it's all about. It's not about the designation. It's about the practices that are actually being implemented to enhance the community's pollinator and bee habitat. So um, 
if you don't know what the process is, oftentimes they're listed on the municipality's website or the, you can call the mayor's office or um, you know the public official's office. And sometimes the public officials receive requests better when they're coming from a group of residents than they do coming from internal staff. Sometimes they receive it better through internal staff. So you just have to feel out what, what works best for your municipality and which might have the least red tape. Ah, sorry. Going the wrong way. Okay. And so in thinking through your B-City team or committee, um, which you'll want to start forming before you um, enact the resolution, but it can always grow. And these are some suggestions. Um, of course, thinking about your municipal partners and then um, thinking about local businesses that might be interested in joining your committee. And you can think outside the box. Um, I have a picture of a cocktail here because <laughs> we, pick, we have some beer and wine partners who are on our committee. We, we actually have a winery that makes mead. And so that's Honey Girl Meadery and they've been an active partner. Um, Joanne mentioned some of our other core businesses that are pretty unique to Durham. Um, Burt's Bees headquarters is here, and then also Bee Downtown. It's a very um, inspiring um, business. But think about, you know, the food providers because we need the bees and the pollinators for our food um, production, and then also um, landscape and tree companies. Obviously, the beekeepers groups, um, cooperative extension local universities um, and their clubs, artists, <laughs> Joanne, um, can be a great partner. Um, if you have service clubs that have a green team or a green mission, that can be great. Um, and then other nonprofits um, can be really invested in. In our case, we have Toxic Free NC that has been a great partner for us. And um, thinking about trees and other landscape features as being really beneficial for pollinators is also, um, you know, expands your sphere of people who can connect and um, help move your programs forward. And these things come into play a lot more even once you start putting on events and educating the public about your mission. Um, and so I think that it's just, it can be really fun and inspiring and educational and so it's just a wonderful um, confluence of all these great community building activities um, so I encourage you to proceed with the process and it's really rewarding and I'll stop sharing my screen great thank you Tanya and Joanne that's very inspiring everything you're doing um, so now we have some time for questions. It looks like nobody's entered any yet, but if you have any questions for any of the presenters or for me about the process or people's experience applying, um, I'll give everyone a minute or so to enter any of those. All right, so we have a question and it's, would one of you mention a particular challenge and how you overcame that in your designation journey? So feel free to just unmute yourself and hop in if you have an answer to that. Uh, this is Tanya. I can speak to one of our challenges um, because I um, work for a, this Keep America Beautiful affiliate but I am actually a city employee, so I'm in our Department of General Services. And we have a very complicated protocol for submitting requests for um, any sort of council activity that has to go through a lot of different um, layers of approval before it gets to the council. And so we had a deadline. We were trying to get our... Um, our status as a B-City USA approved before National Pollinator Week in the particular year that we applied. And council meetings kept rolling around and the process was just continuously being delayed by um, the bureaucracy that we were needing to go through. And, and in hindsight, I do understand the significance of the resolution. Um, 
but it really, it was a lot slower than we expected. And so it required some pushing from the community and some pushing that I needed to do to the, my supervisors within the city structure. Um, but I think everybody was, um, you know, it was a better document and there was more buy-in for it by the time we were finished. So it was worth it, but it requires some patience and also some nudging. Thanks for that. Does anyone else want to add anything to that question? If not, we can move on to the next one. Um, so somebody's asking about the timeline. They say, can you provide an idea of the total project timeline from concept to implementation and certification? That's a great question. And in my experience, it varies a lot. And a lot of it's that piece of how quickly can you get the resolution um, through the city council? That could take a year. That could take a month. It kind of depends um, how much buy-in you have. And it really helps if you have someone from the city council on your committee, and we see that quite often. Um, it seems like the presenters today gave a little bit of a sense, but do you each wanna just repeat how long the process took for you, kind of from hearing about it to becoming certified? Uh, I can do, well, sorry, go ahead, Heidi. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. In Lynchburg, I think we started talking about it in March, and by September, we had the designation. Um, I think I, I found out about the program maybe in August, and then we were certified in June of the next year, so a little less than a year, maybe 10 months. Let me jump in here. Um, we, um, from the time of the CEC committee, committee putting their recommendations through, um, that was during the summer of 2019. Um, so probably the beginning, like May, June of 2019. We had the resolution to council for B City specifically done by October. So, you know. It it helped us that we had another committee had already made the B City recommendation to council and council had already agreed to it through them. And then it came to us. So us just writing the resolution and then going back through the process, um, that didn't take quite as long. Great, thank you. All right, I'm gonna give a one minute for any other questions anyone wants to throw out there. I'll just make a comment to you. There were some um, suggestions or mentions of creating a website. And um, in our case there, we have um, a page or a section of the Keep Durham Beautiful website that is dedicated to B City USA. So we have a URL that is special is durhambcity.org and that directs to that one section of the Keep Durham Beautiful website. So we can share durhambcity.org more easily and then people can go straight to that section. So if you don't wanna deal with creating your own website, you might find a partner who's willing to create a subset of their pages that would be dedicated to your pro program and projects. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right, I don't see any more questions. We had a few comments saying that people really enjoyed the presentation um, and found it interesting. And I completely agree. This was really great to hear from the four of you um, about your experience and some of the really neat projects that you've been doing. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you also to our captioner. We had somebody actually join. We didn't think we would be able to get someone, but that's really great. So thank you. Um, and thank you to everyone who's here. If you have any other questions, feel free to visit our website, which is bcityusa.org. Um, and you can also email us if you have any other questions. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day and thank you for coming.